Okay, so this will be our, our last kind of general video on the definition of the derivative before we move on to establishing the various derivative properties that will allow us to just compute derivatives as as you know mechanically we won't once we kind of learn all the derivative rules we we tend to forget about the definition and we just start kind of crunching through the numbers and we'll see that you guys you guys will all get quite good at that in in relatively short period of time uh, but before we do there's one important result uh, that we want to cover which has to do with the relationship between differentiability and continuity so the uh, the theorem here is that every differentiable function is continuous so if you know that the derivative exists at a point you're guaranteed that your function has to be continuous there um, so if you know that the derivative exists at every point then you know that your function is continuous everywhere so so continuity is a precondition for the derivative to exist right? it's impossible to have a derivative if your function is not continuous so let's see why this is true okay so this is an if then statement right if the derivative exists then the function is continuous so so what do we need to show um, well what we need to do is there are two steps when you want to tackle an if-then statement. We need to assume the if part. We need to assume our hypothesis. So we assume that the derivative exists. And what do we need to show? What we want to show is that f is continuous. Okay? And so the way we get from from you know uh, from a to b here right how do we how do we make this connection go from here to there well you know 90 percent of a good proof is writing down definitions if you have good definitions it's a matter of writing them down and connecting them together um, at least for straightforward things right there don't get me wrong they are very very hard proofs to take a lot of work but um, a lot of the easy ones this is the pattern so what do we know about this uh, saying that this derivative exists? Well, we know what that means. We know that that means that we can compute this limit okay, and we know that it has to equal f prime of a. Uh, although we'll see that uh, for the purposes of this problem it's easier to use the alternative formulation of the derivative. So the limit as x goes to a, f of x minus f of a over x minus a. Okay? So we get to assume that that limit exists. Okay? We want to show that our function is continuous. What does it mean for a function to be continuous? Remember that this means that the limit as x approaches a of f of x has to equal f of a. Okay? So I get to assume the definition of the derivative. I get to assume that limit exists, and I need to establish this equation here. So how do we do it? Well, let's start with one side of that equation and see if we can get to the other side. And this is going to be, you know, this might seem a little bit too slick. There's going to be some trickery involved. Um, and of course, the reason that I know how to do this is I read it in a book one time, and uh, you know the reason the person who wrote wrote the book knew how to do it is they read it somewhere else, and and really, the person who figured out the first time that this this works is, you know, probably somebody who's been dead for several hundred years. This is something that was figured out a long, long time ago. Now, first thing I'm going to do add and subtract f of a. f of a is a number, right? Um, why do, and, and I guess there could be this issue of, oh, what if, what if a is not in the domain? How do I know that f of a is actually defined? Well, I know that f of a has to be defined because it shows up in the definition of the derivative, right? If, if that f of a is not defined, then there's no way for me to calculate f prime of a. So I can add and subtract a number, and nothing changes, right? Those cancel each other out. Um, but I can also multiply and divide by something, and I won't change my limit. 
what do I want to multiply and divide by? Well, keep in mind that I'm trying to make use of this, right? I'm trying to get this limit to show up for me. Um, and so that's where we're headed. So I can put that in as long as I also multiply by x minus a, because those cancel out. And I've got my f of a. Maybe you can see where we're going now. Now I can use my limit properties and I can say, well, this is the, the limit as x goes to a, f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And I know that limit exists because that's my assumption. Okay. Limit of a product is product of the limits limit of a sum is the sum of the limits. And what can I say about the limits that I have here? Well, this is f prime of a, right? And I know that because that was my assumption. That's, that's what I'm assuming here. What is this? Well, this is a polynomial. I can just do direct substitution. I get a minus a. That's zero. What about this? Well, f of a is a constant, so the limit of a constant is just a constant. So what do I get? I get something times 0, which is just 0, plus f of a. So I get f of a, and that's exactly what I needed to show. Okay, that takes care of the result. Now, before we, before we leave this, let's address one thing. There's a very common mistake that students make, especially when they're first starting out and they're not used to dealing with these logical statements, these if-then statements, and they haven't really thought carefully about how that works. Um, and if-then statement is a one-way street. The, you know, the hypothesis implies the conclusion, but it doesn't necessarily work the other way around. If we know the conclusion holds, that doesn't necessarily give me the hypothesis. And so the mistake that people can make here is they can mistakenly assume that continuity is good enough to guarantee that you have a derivative. But this is not the case. Continuity is a necessary condition. Without continuity, you can't have a derivative. Um, but it's not sufficient. There, we can find plenty of examples of continuous functions that do not have derivatives. And uh, I'm going to give you the simplest example. So let's consider the absolute value function. Okay, we know that this function is continuous. Right? We can we can check it directly from the definition if you like. Or you can you can think about it graphically. So the the graph is y equals x when x is bigger than or equal to zero, and it's y equals minus x when x is less than 0. So here's, here's y equals f of x, right? y is the absolute value of x. Um, so you can see there are no breaks in the graph. It is continuous. You can check. So the only place where you could possibly have trouble is 0. And you can check that the left and right hand limits are both equal to 0 at 0. So the limit exists and is equal to 0. And f of 0 is 0, right? So, so we know. We know that the limit as x goes to 0 of absolute value of x is equal to 0, which is also the absolute value of 0. So that means that f is continuous at x equals 0. Okay, But what happens if you try to take the derivative? Well. You can probably see what's going to go wrong, right? The derivative gives you slope, and you can see that the slope is 1 for positive x. It's minus 1 for negative x. And so you might guess that if we were to consider one-sided limits here, then we would very quickly run into trouble. So if I consider the absolute value of 0 plus h minus the absolute value of 0 all over h, so that's the limit, h going to 0, from the right absolute value of h over h. But if h is approaching 0 from the right, h is positive, And that means that the absolute value of h is just h. 
And so this is just h over h. It's 1. The limit is 1. And if I were to consider the left-hand limit, all right, absolute value of 0 is 0. Okay. Well, when h is less than 0, the absolute value of h will be minus h. So this becomes minus h over h. Um, the h's cancel and leave me this time with a minus 1. Okay. So these, these are not equal. The left-hand limit does not equal the right-hand limit. And that means that the limit doesn't exist. So f prime of 0, which is the limit, it's defined as a limit. That limit does not exist, so the derivative does not exist at that point. So this function is not differentiable at zero. Uh, this is the easiest example. There, are, of course, there are many more. Um, you can even it is possible to show theoretically uh, that you can construct a function which is continuous at every point but differentiable at no point. Um, there's an example due to Karl Weierstrass that shows this, but it's it, it's a really bizarre example. Um, and it's beyond this class to demonstrate examples like that. Okay, so in the next videos, we will begin the derivative rules.